So I shall share my screen over there. Let's see. Screen. Right. There we go. Share desktop. I shall close that and open that. View slideshow. Okay. Is this good, Chad? Yes, it's fine. Can you, can you see the screen? Great. Okay. So um, I, I will rush a little bit. Um, so I am introducing here in in the title, "Militating Through Conjured Archives." Why? Um, the whole project and what we want to really think about parallel to the actual history itself is why is it important to look at this history? Why is it important to disseminate it? Why is it important for me to, to, to show these archives? Are they just archives of history or not? Well, they're not just archives of history. They are documents of, of, um, of, of struggles, I would say, struggles that are relevant. So militating through the conjured archive means um, I, this archive, what you see at meme has been conjured. It, it, it's not something we can find anywhere. And also the material that comes around it, which comes in the second part in the cultural a cultural atlas is something that is completely conjured up. It's like you decide, I decide uh, that Shiraz Persepolis is in line with, is in the spirit of, for example, a project that happened with Max Roach in America or a project that happened between Yehudi Menuhin and, um, and Vilayat Khan uh, as a musical project or a, an establishment that was created in Senegal called Mudra Afrique which was created by um, Senegalese and French Belgian dancers. So um, why are these things important? Because this archive shows really a, a space of aspiration and a space of, dis, um, of dreaming for a new future, right? So um, these are just bits about the archaeology final decade. Uh, I just want to say that what we want to do is to summon these debris of history in order to in fact summon ourselves as the audiences as the audience that becomes a witness to segments of history that are otherwise unavailable so what you see here at meme is not available anywhere else right is a bit of history that that has uh, um intentionally been wiped away we have to keep that in mind there's an intentionality in the wiping away of culture is rather like in Bosnia where it was declared that mosques never existed because they were destroyed. So the erasure is followed by a new narrative, which means it never existed. There are Iranian artists who have not been aware of the existence of such a massive festival, which ran for 11 years in our own country. And they're actually artists. And the very first time I showed the material in 2014 at the Musée d'Art Modern in Paris, artists inside of our show my own colleagues of a different generation were not aware of such a chunk of Iranian history itself, right? So um, now uh, I am going to, these are images of, for example, uh, various shows that we've had. This is a very extensive show that we had at the Dhaka Art Summit. This is a little um, image of the cultural atlas and the relationships between events, people, thoughts, books, um, philosophical traditions, um, institutions, uh, political movements, emancipatory movements, the black movement, civil rights movements, gay movements, etc., the non-aligned movement. So this is what will come later. We'll talk about that later. Now, the excavated archives. So I put this exhibition, which you also see at Meme, within basically seven episodes. The first episode, I'm, I'm rushing here now, the let me come, sorry. Let's see if this plays. All right. It's work. Let me stop that, yeah. Um, one of the very important things I want to draw attention to to, which isn't in the exhibition, is that um, in 1967, when the Shiraz Festival was inaugurated, um, I think, I believe as a historian that the founders of the festival were very aware of what was going on in the world of art, art and performance in the third world. In 1966, the Dakar Senegalese Festival 
of Negro arts, and it was called the Negro arts, um, was um, was created. And it happened for one year in Senegal, in Dakar. And then it was the si a similar project was um, was um, established in was established in um, uh, Algiers, in Algeria, and uh, that was in 1969. Now there was a very interesting moment here also where Shiraz also comes into because in 1966 in Dakar, Senegal, it was called Negro Arts. There was a very particular dimension to that festival. It was an incredible festival. I want to show you a little clip of it. Um, it had um, a focus on negritude. Now, in 1969, there was a there was a reaction to 1966 because 1966 did not include North Africa. So, 1969 in Algiers became a Pan African festival and wanted to transcend um, the any binary or any difference or any sort of, um, how could I say, any kind of boundary or border or separation between Sub-Saharan Africa, Black Africa, the notion of negritude and the concept of Africanism. So this happened in 1969 in Algiers and then nothing happened again until Festac. Uh, there was a gap of at least a decade which happened, or I think it was 1974 or something. It happened in, um, in Lagos in Nigeria. So uh, it's very important. These are all one-off events. Shiraz happened for 11 years. So this is really important that in that in that moment in history, McCarthyism, CIA, America, Cold War, the Iron Curtain, the Soviet bloc, which was called the East, uh, and the NATO bloc, which was called the West. In fact, the East and West definitions were much more defined in that context rather than the so-called Orient or, or, or the Western world. Uh, it was a huge, huge, huge diplomatic political feat already to put up such an exhibition. Now, let me see if I can. This is a clip from um, William Greaves, the director who made this film about Dakar, Senegal. Run there. No, music. Let me now start this. This is something that I've compiled for the Shiraz Festival. Sorry, I have to really had to jump the um, African one. the hills outside Shiraz is host to the festival. 
my point of view is more um, sentimental than professional. I think that we should keep our traditional music. And uh, of course, I think that the influence of the Western music will be inevitable. Right. Um, the seven episodes that we talk about um, in the exhibition, one uh, focus is the concentrating and understanding that there was a huge amount of effort in reinvigorating local art forms around Asia and Africa as a whole uh, in the post-colonial moment i.e. looking at original forms of folklore, regional art forms, ritual art forms, and understanding what and if they are worth in reinvigorating. So I focus on that. The second episode, uh, I the, the second theme I've picked out is um, a notion and a desire and aspiration to equalize, unify, and universalize. At Shiraz in 1969, they decided they they articulated this very specifically, exactly as I as I'm mentioning here. This is not made up. Uh, this is not a retrospective reading. It was a conscious decision, articulated at the time, and they decided to do it through sound, whereby um, if we reduce sound to rhythm, we will transcend space and time, cultural difference, geographic difference. 
and um, uh, uh, lo uh, and local differences. So they they um, put uh, in the program, as you saw in the beginning of the um, video clip that I have created for this talk, for example, Rwandan drummers, which we see um, an image of here, um, they um, invited Iranian traditional, res not wrestlers, but um, like bodybuilders, uh, the Zur Khaneh, which is a form of ritual malehood, uh, a chivalrous uh, a kind of ritual, uh, which involves a, a certain kind of bodybuilding and sport, but done to music and rhythm. They invited that, which isn't really considered, let's say, in, 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 in a conventional sense, at sense as performance, but that was exactly what these spaces were trying to do, was to look at, uh, look at uh, f uh, um, um, native material and recontextualize them. Uh, Zan Yanis Zanakis, who was a contemporary composer. He was Greek origin, born in Romania and uh, living in, 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 in France. And he was a, an outspoken communist and he'd lost an eye in the civil war uh, against fascism in Greece. And he was a very active at, at the festival. They invited for the same year. Well, Yanis Zanakis produces a, produced a piece only for percussion, i.e. only rhythm. They invited uh, Max Roach, uh, uh, the very well-known American percussionist, also very active in the black movement in America. And um, they juxtaposed those with, for example, Balinese gamelan that you also saw in the video because of the, um, the gamelan music and, and, the, um, and the striking of the instruments. So they, the, the notion was to make some sense, some connections, some performative connections, some sort of... Uh, almost, I would say, spiritual connection, uh, certainly a, a kind of a human expression connection between geographies, between times, uh, and between uh, and, be, and between sort of political divides. Emancipating the universal ecstatic powers of ritual is what they come up, came up with the next in the next year, again, about universalism, a universal uh, a pool of consciousness from which all cultures, all expressions, all desires, all forms of um, of performance draw inspiration. So the idea was that there is some kind of unity within the disunities of time and space and geography and culture. So they had Bread and Puppet Theater, they had, uh, which was an American Marxist group, they still exist. They had an Iranian a piece based on an 11th century Iranian text, but a contemporary piece here. This is Bread and Puppet that also performed in the streets. They always insisted in performing in the streets. Uh, uh, this is the very, very well-known experimentalist from Poland called Jerzy Grotowski doing uh, uh, Calder uh, Calderon's piece, uh, The Constant Prince, the Spanish uh, piece. Uh, and this is another image of, uh, of, 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 a, of a Spanish actress. She is um, Nuria Espert, who was staunchly against uh, the fascist government in Spain at the time. And she's performing Jean Genet. So the festival considers everything from this kind of ritualized form of performance that um, that Grotowski liked to this ritualized form that the Bread and Puppet Theater used to use by using masks and other tropes to ritualize their, their works to the kind of ritual content of the maids by Jean Genet. And then they also then invited Senegalese, uh, the Senegalese Ballet National to perform. The Ballet National was, was created in Senegal after uh, independence uh, and it was the first African uh, modern ballet company to be created, looking again, rather like Shiraz, looking at native material, but in order to make it into a modern performance. Consolidating a nexus for modernizing nativists and mingling with ritualizing modernists is my theme uh, that I was interested in, which is whereby I, I, I sort of dis discussed that the uh, European, um, Main Eastern European and Western European, i.e., for example, the Polish we discussed, the Hungarians, they are all, also there. There's everybody from the communist bloc is 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 represented in the performances at Shiraz, but also a North American, especially the Black Mountain College people like John Cage. I don't know if John Cage was actually there, but John Cage himself, Merce Cunningham, and um, uh, um, uh, Gordon Muma and uh, Robert Wilson, etc., from from the U.S. They um, even Andy Warhol arrived here and did some um, stage set. 
So there was this kind of understanding that the real alliance between third worldism and experiments of the third world would only be meaningful if it were if it were done with experimentalists, not with conventional traditional orchestras, but with experimentalists in music and performance and theater and drama uh, within the Euro-American Euro sphere, but also in Japan. So Japan uh, had a very important artist called Shuji Terayama. He came to, uh, to the festival twice, uh, but at the same time, the no, the traditional no theater came from Japan as well. So Japan really um, represented a spa an Asian space that brought also, but brought um, an international avant-gardist um, artist like, um, like um, Shuji Terayama, but also his traditional traditional forms. So uh, this is really looking at, um, I think, a very genuine interest in, for example, Merce, uh, uh, in Merce Cunningham or John Cage or Gierzy Grotowski from Poland in especially Indian and Zen Buddhist uh, philosophies, uh, modes of expression, modes of thinking, and even modes of drama. Uh, this is a very, this is a whole PhD in itself. So I, I, I'm bringing attention to that coalition or that alliance between these various people. This, pro, this project called Orgast, which happened in 1971, is a very good example of a pan-cultural, pan-geographic, you know, um, um, breaking down the boundaries of, 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 of language, et cetera, et cetera that involved various directors, involved Ted Hughes from the UK, Peter Brook from the UK, Arbi Ovanesian from Iran, um, uh, um, Andre Sherban, and, and also uh, Jeffrey Rees. But also, but, and the performance came from the US, Portugal, Spain, Mali, UK, France, Japan, Cameroon, Iran, etc. So this was a kind of a very utopian project. It happened in 1971, it happened over two nights, it happened in the ancient ruins. Uh, some of the performances began at midnight. Again, uh, harking back to traditional ritual, especially Asian performances, where the gods are called at midnight or at, at least at sunset, the spirits are available after the sun sets, etc. So these artists were looking at those ancient traditions uh, as, as much as they were producing uh, very experimental contemporary works. Um, we I draw attention to co-opting the avant-garde, the, the, what I'm talking about, in the reversal of, um, of, of knowledge, in the reversing of the transmissions of knowledge, i.e. Indian, um, Chinese, Japanese, uh, various African modes of percussion, etc., influencing Eastern European, Western European, and North American experiments. Here, for example, Merce Cunningham and John Cage, who were very, very indebted to Zen Buddhism, they were programmed alongside Balinese traditional gamelan performance and dance. They were programmed um, in the same year alongside uh, traditional Katakali performance, Katakali dance drama, the Indian form. Uh, this was from Kerala. Here we have um, an image of a concert called, a piece called Mantra by Karl Heinz Stockhausen, who was also deeply interested in, in, in Indian philosophy, for example, Sri Aurobindo. And here is very interesting, the context, the setting, it's actually in one of the Sarais, one of the courtyards of the Bazaar of Shiraz, um, which um, has its, it, it, its, its traditional architecture, its original architecture. And then there is that pond, which, was, which is part of that courtyard. And here they've put, uh, the festival organizers have put these planks of wood across the pond and the two pianos, which are the two instruments of Stockhausen's mantra, are assembled on top of it. Now, this also harks back to traditional Iranian form of drama uh, that happened uh, in the courtyards, and it would happen on makeshift stages that were set up exactly like this by putting planks over ponds, and then this commedia dell'arte form of improvised Iranian drama Used to take, used to be performed um, uh, for 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 small for small audiences like chamber performances. Um, this is an image. Oh, sorry, Vali. Uh, sorry to cut you off. I've just asked everyone uh, if you have any questions. Uh, the chat uh, feature is open, so please do write your questions there, so Vali can answer them. Thank you very much. All right. 
Now we're almost finished. This is one of the few images that I have of the actual crowd. You can see, um, you can see the age, uh, you can see the various people, you can see mothers and babies, you can see people with a, with a little headscarf, you can see Europeans. Um, this is another piece by Stockhausen. This is another image of that's Cunningham. That's John Cage. He actually had his birthday there. This is an image of a performance that happened over a period of a, of a week from a Friday night to another Friday night, nonstop, 162 hours, I believe it was. And it was conceived by Robert Wilson, Bob Wilson, who's a very um, established, today very established, but at the time not at all. I think he was 27 years old. And um, he uh, he was given more or less carte blanche to do this. Promoting the case of Africa is something that I'm particularly interested in. I place the Shiraz Festival and the 11 years of the festival very much in, in, in parallel line with what I dis dis discussed in um, Dakar, Senegal in 1966 and in 1969, Algiers. Um, we had a lot of African performers. Uh, this is a Ugandan project from the newly established National Theatre of Uganda, Robert Serumaga, that um, again looked at native material, Renga Moi, to create a contemporary piece of Ugandan theatre. So they came um, to the festival. Um, I just remembered to mention also that the Rwanda, Rwandan drummers that um, you saw earlier, they had they, they had left Rwanda for the first time ever to perform on an international stage. The Senegalese ballet performed on an international stage for the first time. So Shiraz really became an inception point for these things. This is also the uh, Ballet National de Senegal again. Uh, this is the Rengamoy image. Uh, this is uh, a very important opera from Nigeria, which was created by um, uh, by uh, Duro Ladipo. It, it it went also to Berlin. It also came to Edinburgh, but it came to Shiraz as well. And again, um, Duro looked at uh, native material. In this case, Yoruba, uh, Yoruba uh, tribal stories. And he created a kind of an opera called Oba Koso, which translates... Uh, the king did not hang. And um, this came to, to Shiraz as well. And here I'm just sharing with you at the end of the talk, uh, some performances that happened, for example, in Dhaka, uh, Bangladesh, where we had contemporary artists responding. The first one is a harmonium and, um, and Chennai uh, concert, a uh, piece of music uh, co composed by Ritu Sattar. The, the 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 bottom image is a kind of processional performance that I created myself with the Polish London-based artist Goszka Makuga. Um, top left is the Merce Cunningham Foundation sending one of the um, licensed dancers to do a piece by Merce Cunningham, which is actually choreographed for the general public. Uh, the lower image below it is again Ritu Sattar. And um, above right is a piece by Hassan Khan that he uh, that was an uh, that was a um, an audio a musical piece that was performed in this uh, space that I created. And below is uh, Yasmin Jahan Nupur that performed her contemporary choreography alongside traditional uh, Bangladeshi Santal performers. These are various other performances that happened in Berlin. These are images of the film festival, uh, stills from the various films. And this is a list of where this exhibition has been so far. And I'm going to now- Thank escape. you, Valerie. Uh, thank oh, you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I have getting... opened the floor up for questioning. Um, I don't know if people have responded yet. Um, if you do have questions, can you kindly please write them in the chat? Uh, chat box, which I've allowed everyone can um, write a question or if they have a comment, please feel free to do so. Um, to be honest, I have a question myself, so I would like to ask you, um, one could describe this project um, almost uh, uh, as your child, you know, it's, it is, this has been a project that you uh, that you started ten, almost 10 years ago and that you have been nurturing and developing uh, for almost now a decade. Uh, plus, um, and we've seen that uh, throughout the years, it has grown um, in its in its iterations and its many forms. 
as a result of this exhibition, also a lot of knowledge has been developed around the subject. As you mentioned at the beginning of your talk, that uh, you know most of your peers, you know peers from different generations, weren't aware that such a festival had, had taken place um, in Iran's uh, cultural history. Um, so I would like to ask, how has this affected you personally, um, as a curator, as an as an academic, um, having started this project ten years ago and where you are now, um, hmm. um, and uh, how has how has this impacted you, uh, or influenced influenced you as a curator? Right. Okay. So well, um, yeah, I I, um, I became aware that there were Iranians younger than me who were not aware of of the festival. Um, my generation would be aware of the festival, but there was there's there's a, there's a huge amount of confusion about the festival because there was a there was a um, court celebration that happened at Persepolis at the ruins where the festival used to happen in 1971. And um, it was much liked and much disliked at the same time as a as, as a kind of uh, as a court project, as an imperial court project. It had nothing to do with the festival. That also received um, much post-revolutionary aggression and violence, but a lot of people conflate the two. So that's one of the issues. So people think that the Shiraz Festival is the same as the celebrations that happened at Persepolis in 1971 that were organized. Uh, by the state and by the court. So um, this, you, you, basically amputation of culture, amputation of history, removal of, of connection and documentation and, and, uh, and, and knowledge of one's own history is done for a purpose. And here it was very obvious. Next generation don't know about it. The generations of the time confuse everything together, conflate everything. And in the absence of information, the abs in the absence of material, uh, mythologies grow, and that mythology itself becomes part of re-territorializing memory and re-territorializing cultural history, whereby not only the original territory is removed, but something instead of it um, is is um, grafted in. So that became that became uh, very obvious as a let's say uh, an aim of this archaeological project to undo. So the archaeology final decade basically came about once I began to realize that my interest in Shiraz Persepolis is unraveling, is opening a Pandora's box of many, many other contextual issues, not just about the context, the content of the festival, but about the context within which it 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 um, was created and it evolved, and and also the context within which it it was destroyed and removed, and today where much uh, where very little knowledge of it is, exists so in, curatorially i became interested in these you know in these dispossessed histories this wasn't the original intention i was originally interested in performance i had done a lot of work with theater i have directed pieces of theater in the uk i have produced them i have also been a translator of iranian plays for the royal court theater and the barbican where, where we produced them uh, so uh, i had an interest in theater and that interest led me to Shiraz. And then I began to uncover all the issues that you're referring to and I've talked about. In, in, Appreciate it. In, Thank in, you. Um, I have questions from Louisa. Uh, so we'll start with her question. She asks, how does the Shiraz festival compare to the Baalbek uh, Baalbek festival over the years? Yeah. So Baalbek is very interesting, terribly interesting. Um, I was actually summoned by the Source of Museum to, to do a, an exhibition, a very extensive exhibition on, on Baalbek as a space. And of course, a component of that was the festival. Uh, the Baalbek festival, now I'm just racking my memory. I think its uh, inception is in 1955. It's the first um, festival of its type that happens outside of the Euro-American zone, or maybe even the, just the European zone. It, it, um, it is conceived as a state project also, during the time of President Shamoun. And a decision is made that Baalbek, uh, that has that that became an emblem of the new nation, the most emblem emblematic space of the new nation, the new Lebanese nation, uh, that Baalbek is the place to celebrate culture, the meeting of East and West, the celebration of universal culture, uh, and to promote also to promote Lebanon as a seat of culture, as a seat of history, 
right? So it links to, it, 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 it was very aware and it very much linked to European trajectories of thought about the origins of civilization, you know, Egypt, Mesopotamia, etc., and the, the importance of the rocks, the stones themselves, the temples, the spaces, these archaeological spaces that, uh, you know, were made by man, but transcend man in some ways, and are the bastions of civilization, often lost to the locals, but there they are as, as physical memories in the landscape of grand and wonderful and civilized days, right? So the, 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 the um, national project of Lebanon was very aware of all of this narrative and chose Baalbek as a site of a festival. Similarly, Shiraz, Persepolis, you could link, you could link that mentality of the ruins, Shiraz, Persepolis, the meeting of East and West, the seat of the empire, the Persian empire. Similar, there's some sort of similarity there, uh, but Baalbek, um, still runs, Shiraz doesn't. Uh, the Baalbek festival stopped during the the war. It was it was I think it it almost stopped for about two decades, and it was uh, it was reinstated. Right. So I really paid ode to the spirit of we continue nevertheless, and you know in spite of etc. It's in Lebanon, so that was very interesting. But yeah. essential difference, Baalbek intended to and articulated. Um, an interest in so-called high culture. So they invited the greatest of the greatest. They invited uh, von Karayan, et cetera, et cetera. They were not at all tapped into. In fact, they refrained from, um, from al allying themselves with third worldism altogether. It's a very much a kind of top-down, um, high culture, low culture, uh, version of uh, attitude to culture. It, it it really did not respond to what Shiraz came up to do. So I say Balbek does not belong to the to the family that I create uh, critically. Shiraz, Dakar, um, uh, Algiers, Festac, and uh, Nancy in France, which was a university performance festival. It also has ended. And another one that hasn't ended and continues is the Belgrade International Festival of Theatre. That and Nancy were very important and very in line with these third worldist projects. Baalbek was very much in line with, we promote Lebanon as a civilized looking to Europe space. Thank you, Vali. Um, I have a question from Charles. Um, he asks, uh, were the Iranian public allowed to open uh, access or um, only open to invited guests? So, uh, sorry, to rephrase, he's asking if the Iranian public were allowed uh, access uh, to the festival or was it only open to invited guests? Oh, no, no. Um, there was no such thing as invited guests other, other than, you know, opening nights like you may have at the Royal Opera House here, etc. Uh, no, uh, there were ticket sales and um, students had could buy a season ticket that allowed them access to all the performances and university dorms. And I think the coach to travel, for example, from various cities to Shiraz, I mean, a package, basically a package um, within a card. So they could purchase the travel accommodation and access to all the performances. Uh, in fact, in 1974, it was uh, estimated that about 40,000, there were 40,000 attendees and audience members at, at the various productions of that year, I would say that most of them would be the youth. I understand. Thank you very much. Um, I have uh, two more questions, one from Charles. Uh, she is asking, um, looking at the arts festival of Shiraz Persepolis archives, did uh, the artist Rahman, Rukni and Hassam invent anything with their performances? Um, yeah, I I know Ramin and Rokin and Hassan very well. I've worked with them very closely. I admire their work very much. I think I um, if I were to bring the amphitheater that we had in um in Dhaka, uh, Bangladesh for contemporary projects, 
uh, to Dubai, which I was hoping to do at Al Sarkal in, in, in the open space in that sort of square. Um, I, I did speak to Al Sarkal to bring that roving amphitheater. Um, Ramin and Rokhni and Hassam would be commissioned by me, invited by me to respond. I wouldn't say they are doing something that is part of, you know, is it is um, something that is either like the stuff that happened at Shiraz or um, riding off the back of that. No, I think their, their work is very original, but I think is very much in line, especially the improvisation, experimentation and, and the grotesque and the car carnivalesque that they have. Uh, they've also actually done uh, a, a rendition of the uh, Maids by Jean Genet. So I think they're... they're um, let's say their um, aura is in line with um, various strands of experimentation, improvisation, and various interests that would that were also um, on display at Shiraz. Thank you, Vali. Um, and one more question from Louisa. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you believe that the Shiraz Festival's acceptance of low culture is connected to Saka Kana's inspiration for traditional crafts? Yes. In short, yes. Very good question. Um, uh, uh, there, there, there are debates about what the Sarah Khane movement actually was retrospectively, and that's a good thing because it's it's art historically important. Every you know, in every era, to to go back and and um, retrospectively question and and re reanalyze and be critical again and again. But in general, what was happening at the in, in, within what we call the Sarah Khane movement was also looking at traditional tropes. Um, with knowledge of the contemporary world, with access and knowledge to Europe also. A lot of those um, artists were trained or had links um, to Rome or, or Paris. And uh, yes, I think I, I think um, uh, the interest in native compost, if I put it in a very broad sense, is, is the same. I, I agree with Louisa. Thank you very much, Vali. Um, I'm not sure if there are any more questions. Uh, please, if you do have any more questions, we have, I think, time for one more question if you want to put in uh, another question. Um, and uh, thanks to everyone for staying on. There was a little bit delay at the beginning, um, but uh, <laughs> it's fine. We, 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 we have the presentation and um, I think uh, most of what you wanted to discuss, Vali, if I'm correct, was covered. Um, yes, absolutely. I mean, there, there. Look, there's a lot to cover, right? Okay. So, it's eleven years of festival. So we would. Um, we, I'm we, aware. Um, I will share this with um, my colleagues here. I'm aware that many of these artists may not be known to us, um, unless we're students of drama. So, I'm very aware that um, the names may not um, trigger any, uh, uh, you know, any um, uh, any memory. Maybe Max Roach does. But um, that also does mean that it's very important to study this material, right? Yeah. So um, so also the Europeans have been lost. Many, many of the European artists, experimentalists who that were Shiraz were lost, but definitely um, the, the ones who did, did not become superstars like Ravi Shankar um, are, are, are very in need of excavation, whether they're from Uganda or Morocco or Indonesia or or various spaces, even Asia and Africa. It's very important that we continue to excavate these archives. Very or these not, I mean, at least these histories, yeah. Uh, is, can I ask something? Is Sefide Kalhor link, uh, related to Kehan Kalhor? <laughs> She's I, one of our I'm audience not, members. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I will Kehan you... Kalhor was also at, he also performed at the festival. And, um, and he was one of the cohort of very young musicians in Iran who um, also had, uh, were given huge opportunities to perform at the festival. Um, thank you. Um, so I I will, I think we don't have any more questions, but um, I will just put a note out that the exhibition is still running uh, till the November, uh, sorry, till the 4th of November. So if you are in Dubai, please do make it down to Meme Gallery. Um, as Vali has mentioned and as, you know, uh, talked about in this presentation it is a very important subject to cover to understand to remember um it serves a lot of purpose for today's cultural scene 
um, and cultural practitioners. Uh, so if you are in Dubai, please do make the effort and come down to the gallery um, and see uh, the beauty and the richness of the Shiraz Festival of, of, of Arts, um, contextualized and beautifully curated uh, by Vali. Thank you very much, Vali, for working with us at Meme. We appreciate it. And mm -hmm. it's been a pleasure. Um, I would like to just maybe throw a one last question in there for you. Um, so since um, we know that the uh, the exhibition, the project itself took a brief uh, break during COVID and it has since started again uh, in its tour, so to say, at Meme Gallery, where do you see um, the project picking up or where do you see it going um, in the next few years? Any plans, anything? Yeah. Yes, it is. It's it's true that um, COVID stopped all the all the conversations, and this is the first time the project has come back um, to tour. Uh, so it's great that it's at Meme. After this, in on the second of February, it's opening at um, in Philadelphia at the Asian Arts Initiative. So that's already. Um, that's wonderful. Uh, and I'm working on that. And then by the end of the year, I'm hoping to take it to Vancouver. Um, and we're talking with a with an institution in Vancouver. All the best. All the best. Thank you very much, Vali. Um, Thank thanks, you. thanks to everyone uh, for making the time and for staying on. Thank you very much, Vali, for a wonderful presentation. I will be ending uh, the meeting now and we will be publishing uh, we will be publishing this lecture online on YouTube. So for those who missed out, uh, they'll be able to have a uh, have a look at it online. Um, it will be all there. Thank you very much, guys, and have a good night. Thank you, Vali. Thank you. I will just.